Hey, what's going on today, guys? So, uh, shout out to Randy Johnson because we're doing another truck update video here because uh, between work, school, and um, going to the gym, I just haven't had the time to sit down and do a video. So, uh, I figured while I'm at work, I have a little time to kill. We're kind of waiting to see what we're going to be doing. So, I uh, have a little extra time. Figured I'd shoot a video, work on a little bit of homework. And, uh, yeah, so what we're going to be doing today is talking about a one-week update for the Spyderco Capara. So, Guys, it's complicated. It really is. So um, keep in mind that this video is just going to be my opinions and then my experience for after carrying this knife for a week. Um, I know a lot of people gave this knife uh, glowing reviews, and as they should, it's an excellent knife. But there's just kind of a couple little nitpick things that I have with it that, um, I don't know. Like I said, we're just going to talk about it. So um, first, I guess let's start with the good here. Um, good is this blade. I absolutely love this blade. This is a very well done blade for being Spyderco, and uh, it, it really is exceptional blade here. Um, I believe, like, I went to cut an apple, and I didn't. It didn't split an apple like a PM2 does. So I'm assuming we have a little bit thinner blade stock than the PM2, and then we're also about 17 thousandths behind the edge, so it's a couple thousand thinner behind the edge than a uh, sp uh, PM2. So that's great. The blade on here is definitely an improvement from like a, a PM2 and stuff like that from your usual Spyderco grinds. Um, really well done. And, um, also the tip, you can see the tip is a little bit lower. So, um, I like that a lot. Like for me, drop point is king. Um, just for EDC anyway, because the tip is lower. So like when you're trying to do tip work, opening up boxes, stuff like that, um, the tip is lower. So again, you don't have to raise it. So say if this was a cardboard or something, you don't have to raise the handle nearly as high. So for like, you can raise the handle here, whereas the PM2 goes up. So for the PM2, your, your handle is going to be like somewhere up here instead of like here. You know what I mean? So uh, for tip work and stuff, it's great. So all around for utility for EDC, this blade is fine. This is one of the better blades for EDC. Uh, really is excellent. So um, now let's get to the handle. So um, really, I do like the carbon fiber look on the handle. It is a nicely done carbon fiber, no voids. And um, is this a titanium pivot? I'm asking you guys, I'm doing a review and I'm asking you guys, that's funny, but um, I, I think this is titanium pivot, I don't think that just blasted stainless steel, I put money on that, that's a titanium pivot, but uh, I'm always wrong anyway, so nothing new there, anyway, um, so I guess um, good about the handle is um, when the knife is open, it's absolutely excellent, um, open, the knife is, it's wonderful open, so the ergonomics on here are far superior for me than the PM2, uh, the reason being is, again, if you look here, we have a straight back right here. So when you're grabbing the knife here, again, you're on that straight part, so you have maximum surface area. All right, so this handle should feel more comfortable with hard to use than the PM2 for pretty much everyone. And then you have the curve down here to cradle the pinky. So again, you're not going to be getting a hot spot on the pinky, and there's no jimping back here. So again, it should just be a very overall, very ergonomic design for pretty much anyone's hands. Um, again, this is like an LEDT shape here, Microtech LEDT. Really well done. I mean, I like the handle on this knife a lot. So when when it's open and you're cutting with it, I mean, there's really no hot spots. It's great. Um, if you choke back a little bit, you get, you kind of get the deep carry clip here because it's a loop over. So that deep carry can start biting in your hand a little bit. But I never really, I'm never cutting back here on this knife anyway. So to me, it's a, it's not an issue. Um, so that's pretty much the good. I mean, it, it just overall, it's really well done. Again, we have a super ergonomic handle. And then we have a very well done blade from Spyderco. Um, now, let's talk about, I guess let's go into the things a little bit about... Um, what I'm not too much of a fan of on this knife, and guys, keep in mind, I'm just I'm just going to be honest with you guys. This is just again me carrying the knife for a week. I'm just going to be completely honest with you guys. Honesty is king, right? So, um, and keep in mind that uh, going into this, I'm not a fan of deep carry clips. I do not like deep carry clips that much. Um, on some knives, they're fine, but for the most part, I really am not a big fan of deep carry clips. So keep that in mind. So, um. With the deep carry clip, the reason I don't like them is because when you go to pull the knife out, you have nothing to grab onto. Spyderco says, hey, we can solve this by giving you this little piece right here, which is excellent. This this is great because what this allows you to do is when you go to pull the knife out, you have something to grab onto. Okay, so when you go to pull this out of your pocket, it, it's nice because, again, you pull it out of your pocket and then it comes right out. But since we have a deep carry clip on a longer handled knife, what happens is you go to pull that knife out and it's 
you're, you know what I mean, you're so far away from here, you can't deploy the knife. So naturally, again, you have to scooch. And I, I'm not a fan of scooching. So I have to scooch up. Now, you may say like, oh, well, that's not a big deal. You just have to, you know, move up on the handle, which it's really not a big deal. You can definitely say that's nitpicky. But um, the thing is, we have a very narrow handle and it's very smooth carbon fiber. Very smooth. Okay, there's no grip here. I mean, at all. No, like there's just no texture to it. All right, no grip. So when you're scooching up, um, it, it feel, it's not very confidence inspiring and it feels like I'm going to drop the knife when I scooch up. Um, so like when I'm using this knife, especially because, uh, if you guys don't know, this is going to be a giveaway knife, um, for the Patreon. So, uh, if you guys want a chance to win this knife, um, I'll leave a link to my Patreon down below. But, um, since this is a knife that I'm going to be giving away, I, I have to tell myself, okay, I'm pulling out the Kapara. Be careful, Vinny. Do not drop this knife. Okay. You know what I mean? So, um, that's the thing because I, I do drop a lot of knives. Um, so I, I, that's why one reason why I put lanyards on so many of my knives is just so I don't drop them. It helps me not drop the knife. And uh, even when I do, there's been so many times where I was able to catch the lanyard and the knife didn't hit the ground, which is cool. But um, that's why I put a lot of lanyards on knives. It just to help me not drop it. So again, you have to scooch up and it's just not confidence firing. I don't like it. So um, a simple fix though would be again, Sputterco gives you this awesome little lanyard hole. So what I would do, if you can see, we have that red backspacer. So what I would do is I would throw a black cord through here and then I would get like a, um, you could get red G10 or they even have that other plastic material that glows and it'll, I mean, it'll match this perfectly, that red backspacer. I think that would look good. I think it'll look really good on this knife. But uh, with that lanyard on here, what would happen is you go to pull the knife out and then your pinky can grab that lanyard that would be right there. You would grab the bead or not, whatever's at the end. And then you would go to pull the knife out with your pinky. So pinky would be right about here. And then look where my hand is ready to deploy. So then, so that'll solve it from, that'll kind of cover up the fact that you have to scooch, put a lanyard on there. You don't have to scooch up anymore. Okay. And then it'll give you something to grab onto. So that problem could be solved with a lanyard, um, which if this was my knife, I would most certainly put a lanyard on here for sure. Um, just so again, because I know eventually I would drop the knife. If I keep doing that, I will drop the knife eventually. So, um, simple solution. So that's one thing that I have with it. What, again, there's a simple solution to it put a throw a nice lanyard on there it would look real nice with that backspacer too okay so um next thing about the handle so basically um what i don't like is after the knife's open like i said when the knife is open it's awesome this knife is just excellent when it's open it really is but um especially because what i really like uh what they did here is they don't have jimping up top and they don't have jimping underneath okay so there's no jimping anywhere on this knife so thank you okay so um the the knife locks you in by its shape of the handle okay so the knife is locking you in by form okay it's sh it's shape locking your hand so you can a handle can lock your hand in by shape or by friction this one is going off a of shape which is obviously going if you're if a knife is locking you in by the shape of the design it's not going to be abusive because again friction when you're cutting think about a friction if you're moving the knife and your hands on sitting on something that's aggressive, again, it's going to start being abusive to your hand over time. All right. So this one is using the shape to lock you in and it does an excellent job with its shape locking you in. Very nicely done. Okay. Now, um, when closing the knife though, when you go to close the knife, again, this handle is very narrow and then it's very smooth. So when you go to close the knife, if you can see how, like how I basically have no control over, I, I can't say I have no control over, but it's, Again, it's just not confidence inspiring. So like if I pinch, I drop the knife. So I literally, I didn't do that on purpose. It's literally, you just pinch too hard and you'll drop the knife. Okay. So again, it's just not very confidence inspiring. I'm not a fan of it. Um, again, it's just a little too narrow and too smooth for this. Okay. So I think this knife would have been huge improvement if we turn this knife into a liner lock or a frame lock. Um, just so then again, you could hold the knife like this. You would be able to hit the lock right here hit the liner lock or hit the frame lock. And then um, you would have just been able to fold the knife over. And um, I think that would have been a huge improvement, again, compared to the actual compression lock. Because again, doing this, it just doesn't feel natural. It doesn't, again, I have to keep coming back to it, just not very confidence inspiring. So again, those are my two big hits is, again, having to scooch up, which again, you could throw a lanyard on there, problem solved. And then this one, again, it just, it's not that great to me. So, um, like I said, I really think if this knife was a liner lock or frame lock, it would put it on another level. I really do. So those are kind of my two big things to it. And again, like I said, those may not be like big issues to you. You could just be like, Nero, come on, really? You're, you're being that nitpicky. But again, it just kind of 
I don't know. This knife, I'm being honest with you guys here, this knife just is not resonating with me. So if you guys saw how excited I was when I saw this knife in the uh, unboxing video, I thought it was really cool. And like when I was actually holding it, I'm like, wow, that's super ergonomic, which it is. It's very ergonomic and it has very high cutting performance. It's awesome. And the blade shape, it's just excellent. But um, quite honestly, at this point, and this sounds really bad to say, guys, um, I don't want to continue to carry it. So I really just want to carry something else. Again, it's just not resonating with me, which um, keep in mind that that could change. So I'm naturally, I'm, I said I'm doing two-week carry. I'm going to do a two-week carry. We're going to follow it through. And then uh, who knows? When I come back in a week, I may say, hey, this is the greatest, you know, this is the greatest knife to close ever. Or it's I, I like it that much more. So um, because th that always changes. Your kind of opinions change. And that's what's really good about doing the two-week uh, update videos or two-week carry videos is that um, if I was to just like say when I did that unboxing video, if I just uh, started cutting with it while the knife's open and I cut with it, I'm like, wow, this handle's super ergonomic. The blade is excellent. I really like this knife. And then I wouldn't had the chance to kind of pick up on how I feel about the closing and how I feel about pulling it out of the pocket. I don't have that. I'm not with the knife the entire time. So again, I'm kind of past the honeymoon phase now and I'm just looking at it like, hey, is this good or not? So that's what's great about the two-week carry is that it really gives you an idea of it gives you a much better understanding of the knife, whereas if I was just cutting with it, you know what I mean? It helps you pick up on more things that uh, you may not have seen if you were only to cut with the knife. Um, so like I said, on for those reasons, it's just not really resonating with me at the moment. But again, like I said, it's very possible that'll change. And hopefully it does, because I really do like this knife quite a bit. I think if I did throw a lanyard on here, that would make a big difference. I really do. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. I think that's it for the Sputterco Capara. Um, so far, like I said, really cool knife. We are, we are on the bushing pivot now. This is the CQI version, so it's on the uh, faux bushing pivot. Um, it's not really a cursory bushing pivot, but it, it's it's half a bushing pivot. A little more than half. So it, it's close, but um, yeah, it's really well done. We still have a tiny bit of side to side here. Um, I didn't adjust the pivot. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, like I said, other than that, it's absolutely an exceptional knife. And man, it, I think it's pretty good looking. What do you think? Do you think that's a good looking knife? I think it's a good looking knife. Not the best looking knife. It's a little weird with the blade and the humps, but overall it's a good looking knife. I really, I really do like it. So yeah, guys, I wanted to keep this one a little bit shorter, so we're gonna end it here. Um, oh, and one more thing. Thank you to all the Patreons, guys. Um, the Patreon has just kind of started to explode and uh, I can't thank you guys enough. So again, I will leave a link down below. Like I said, the, this guy is gonna be given, in one week, this guy is gonna be given away, and then probably about three weeks after that, I'm gonna be giving away the um, brand new Microtech SOCOM. So um, yeah, if you guys are interested in that, like I said, link to the description below. And uh, like I said, guys, I can't thank you enough. You guys are awesome. So there you go, guys. That's the one week update on the Capara. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys have one, if you guys feel the same way about pulling the knife out of the pocket and then closing it. I'm pretty interested to hear other people's thoughts on that and uh, how they actually feel about it. Um, like I said, because a lot of other knives, I can like maneuver them much better. I can flip them around and uh, I just feel like I have more control over it. Whereas this one, again, I feel like I don't have that much control over it. And um, this knife, I don't think it's that big of a deal because again, this knife isn't going for like a tactical knife or anything. You know what I mean? Where again, going like that isn't gonna really matter to you because again, I don't think it's trying to be a tactical knife. Uh, now, if this knife did wanna be a tactical knife and you had to do this, yeah, then I'm going to hit the knife. But again, you have to look at what the knife is going for, and this knife is not going for a tactical knife. Now, once it's deployed, and you have this much grip over, and um, once it's deployed and you're holding it like this, yeah, now it could be a tactical knife, because again, th this knife is never going to come out of your hands. You're super locked in here, for sure. So uh, this is fine, but again, it's the pulling out and having to do this to deploy the knife. It's, uh, yeah, I don't think it would be the best thing for a tactical knife, but again, that's not what this guy's going for, so you have to, you have to look at what a knife is you have to look at what the knife wants to do and determine if it's doing it so there you go guys we're gonna finally end it here i think it's the third time i said that i know right so i just like to talk but uh yeah that's it guys hope you enjoyed the video and i'll catch you on the next one see ya